There's a question. It's just as old as audio. Well, maybe not that old. It's as old as the transistor. And that question is, why do tube amps and transistor amps sound different? And through the years, a lot of people have given a lot of different answers, and there are probably a lot of different factors to speak to about this difference. But I'm going to deal with one that I don't hear spoken of a lot today. It's the difference in the way the bias current circuits are set up in a tube and a transistor amp. In a nutshell, here's the difference in the way the typical transistor works compared to the way the typical tube amp works with regard to bias current in the output stage. Bias current in the output stage is a very important determination of how linear the amplifier is both before and after feedback is applied. In a tube amp, the bias current in the output stage can be very constant. Why is that? Well, it's usually set by a fixed voltage source. And then the other thing about a tube, think about it. A tube works by getting hot. And a matter of fact, when you run the tube, it's so much hotter than room temperature. It barely matters what happens to the tube. And quite frankly, when the tube gets even hotter than that, perhaps when it's delivering output power, it doesn't matter. It's, you're going from a tube that is really quite hot to something that's a little hotter than quite hot. Barely changes anything. Let's talk about transistors instead. In a transistor, the output stage is biased by an arrangement that tries to compensate for the temperature of the output transistors. But quite frankly, it never does a very good job. And because of that, when you first turn on a transistor amp, the output stage bias current might be quite low. After you play music for a while, the output stage warms up, output current goes up. And quite frankly, as the music cycles louder and softer, the bias current in the output stage changes. So instead of having this one constant transfer function of the amplifier, you have something that is dependent upon temperature, time, and the music that you've played. That doesn't seem like the way things should be. But that's the way a lot of transistor amplifiers run. Not all of them. With essentially widely variable bias current in the output stage that depends on your room temperature and how loud you've been playing it and how long you've been playing it. Wow. Is there some solid state amps out there that don't have that problem? Glad you should ask that. Turns out that the amps that I sell are based on an LM3886 chip amp. And the interesting thing about that is all the transistors are on one piece of silicon in intimate thermal contact. So the rather approximate and rough kind of bias current temperature compensation that happens in a lot of amps is actually quite exact in an LM3886. What happens is that the bias circuit very well compensates for changes in the temperature of the output stage. Everything tracks together and the bias current itself of the output stage does not change the Akatika amplifiers and the update my Dynaco replacement modules for the Stereo 120 are based on this LM3886 that has this wonderfully constant bias current. And in that regard, all those amps are much, much more tube-like in their behavior. And that might just account for why an awful lot of people say, you know what? These amps sound like tube amps, but with better bass. Hmm. Think about that. Until next time, this is Dan from Akatika. See ya.